All right. So shalom, shalom to once again. We're going to touch on the the misale, the misale or the mysteries, the mysteries of our black lord. Now, if I say black lord, of course, contextually, some folks, because black has a negative connotation, you know, among those who are ignorant. But we're speaking of Yeshua, HaMoshia, who the world calls as Jesus Christ. You understand? However, they have blasphemed his name. They have denied his true humanity as an Ethiopian or a so-called black man. As well as have 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 uh, slandered and, and blasphemed and denied his deity. They've whitewashed him, you understand, and perverted his very teaching. But here in this discipleship level, we want to touch on the misali and the fact that there are four different responses to the word. All right, there are there are four different. Right, responses to right here to the word, right? Or we'll put it to jaw word, right? There are four different, this is the key right here. There are four different responses to jaw word, right? One, and, and now this is based on Matthew 13. This teaching right here is based on, um, put it up here, Matthew 13, 18 to uh, uh, 23. 18 to 23. Matthew chapter 13, verses 18 to 23. There are four different, and, and I want you to really understand this, and this, this I think will definitely help one to recognize who's who, and hopefully to identify who they are within this particular context right here of the scripture. First of all, the first response to the word, right? Now, response is interesting because response, there's a, there's a Kabbalistic link in, in, in response, but we know that response is that is the first part of responsibility, which is the ability to respond. You know what I'm saying? If we are truly Rastafari, if we are Ethiopian Hebrews, then we have a divine responsibility. You see, we have a divine responsibility, but first we must be educated about it. We must learn about it, and we must know it. You know what I'm saying? And then we have to do it or we have to actualize it. But before we can actualize or do anything, you know, saying there's an intelligence failure. There's def there definitely is an intelligence failure among Rastafari. You know, saying among I and I. There's things that should be common knowledge amongst Rastafari, so that we, wherever we're at, you understand, know can learn it. You know, saying know it, actualize it, so that we can then communicate it and share it with others who are willing. To learn, but the first response that you will find to the word of John is no response. This is what the parable, the Misali of um, uh, chapter 13, the Mishle of chapter 13 teaches. The first response is no response. Now, what kind of people generally? would give no response. On a certain level, in the category of those who give no response would be the sheep, right? Would be the sheep. You understand? Know would be the sheep. They would give no response. The lost sheep don't respond to this word of Jah. You know and some probably even see some of the videos or or certain things unless they have some kind of worldly connotation that they can easily, you know, like like tickle their ear about. They would really not check this particular teaching and what we're teaching on. This this seems boring to some, and that that's, that it kind of links to this no response. You understand? Know but they are 
the sheep, right? So we're going to show you the four different responses that Matthew parable 13, chapter 13, verses 18 to 23 touches on, and the type of the type of people also. And there's a there's a further link and a connection that we'll seek to make as well. But this is the foundation. So there's no response. Then you have the emotional response, right? Or the emotive response. The emotional response. Right? You have, you have the emotional response. What, what type of folks would give the emotional response? You understand? The emotional response. The emotional response, interestingly enough, are those who are the awakened ones, right? Those who are awakened. They are awake, and, and we, could, we could also say the conscious ones, the conscious ones, the ones that have some sort of conscience. They, 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 they're not working like everybody else or the majority of folks at a subconscious level, you, you know, those who who still are um, kind of like um, like in the Matrix movie, those who still are plugged in, you know what I'm saying, who still are plugged in to, to it. They're, they're, they're more like the no sheep, I mean the, lo, the, the no response, the sheep, but then the emotional response are the awakened ones. This is your consciousness crowd, right? This is your consciousness crowd. So we're talking about the four different responses and the four types, the four types of folks. You know what I'm saying? It's very important for us to understand this because sometimes we have to counsel a brother or sister and they, you know, they, they bump into one of these types and they were not able to identify, you understand, what was going on. And so often I'm, I'm drawn to this to use this in certain one-on-one -on -one or other reasonings with ones to try to show them that, wow, then I think I said, wait, this is a basic teaching. Christ even says you have to understand this parable or all the, all the other parables. The, this parable is the fit sheet. This, this parable is the key. Now, at our website, at the uh, LOJ Society website, let's see if we have this right here. At the LOJ Society website, you know, these are some of the three folds. No, I don't think it's right here. Uh huh. I don't think it's right there. Yeah, look at this. So now I want to show you the three R's right here. Reading. Um, this is an old presentation. Um, some years, some years ago, back in the nineties. Reading, reasoning, and rising. You understand? Know reading, reasoning. You understand? Know because we have to become familiar with the word, and then we have to. Um, Reason on it. Um, the 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 particular the particular it's it's one of the I M rows at the page. Look for the sower. You sow you sow you sow what you reap, or you reap what you sow. You no, you sow what you reap. That's I think that's how the title is on that. You'll find it on our study page. Go to the study page, download it. That's that, that was one track that we used to um, pass out and have passed out years ago. So we became aware that there are about 30 um, parables of Yesus, of Gitachin and Yesus. And these 30 parables are amazing mysteries because it has a real world application once you are able to make the translation or the interpretation, the accurate interpretation. And on a certain level, that's very amazing, brothers and sisters. I don't know how to really express it until I, I hope you seek it and you get to know it for yourself. Then you'd be like, wow, I always what you're saying, that though this, this was maybe written a long time ago, it, 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 and, but once you understand and interpret it, you can actually see how it has real-world application even today and is the highest level of spirituality, the true way of Yeshua HaMoshiach, of Yesus Christos. 
You know what I'm saying? True Judeo-Christianity is the highest spirituality. It, 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 it is. But with that being said, there's also a lot of counterfeiting, you understand, of the doctrine and, and misrepresentation. You understand? And Christ spoke about that when he spoke about the, the good man sold, sold wheat and the enemy came and threw, threw weeds there. So we can see this even today, whether we speak about the Ethiopian World Federation, whether we speak about Rastafari, whether we speak about the, the whole international and global and even the local level you know, of our reality. It's like, it's like we can see when, when there was a time of, of potential. It's like good seed was sown. Then it seems like a bunch of we, we, weeds, in a sense, not the weed, whatever, but some of weed. That's what we should not call the, the, the Kana bush or Besim. Beshim. We shouldn't call the, the Kana bush um, weed. You know, that's, that, that was going to make a, a, just a video just devoted to that and put that in the title. Cannabis should not be called weed. I know we have used it and said it, but that is... Um, that's for the profane. And I say the profane because that's the opposite of the caduce. So those who seek to set themselves, um, separate themselves to Yah, to Jah, separate themselves to reality, to truth, to Christ, you know, and to God in and through Christ, are the holy ones, the caduceon, according to the scripture. But many of you all think that the, the saints are the saints that the Pope has to name saints. That's the worldly way. That's the counterfeit way. The Bible tells you that a saint is one who seeks to live godly, you understand, who makes a conscious, you understand, a conscious um, vow or a conscious discipleship or a conscious discipline. They are intentional disciples. You know, one says, I'm going to do this consciously. You know, you can just be going along your life and pick up things here and there. But you really don't know these things. You know what you consciously put your attention to, you understand, and what you make a conscious effort to. So anyway, the awakened ones, see, there's an emotional response. Then thirdly, right, there's a worldly response. And this is in the parable where you talk about, you know, that the sower went forth to sow seed and some fell here and some fell there. So we have third is the worldly, right? You have the worldly response, right? Who, who are those who have the worldly response? The worldly response are the, some say demons, but I will say the demoniacs, right? Demoniacs. Some say, like I said, some, some call this class demons. Ionis, the composer in the Cannabis Matrix, a trilogy that we just published, he calls this class the demons. I agree in, in principle there, um, yet a clarification, a clarification of this would be the demoniacs. You know what I'm saying? In the Matrix schema, this class or this group right here, who are the worldly response in Matthew chapter 13, verses 18 to 23, that first parable, the parable is all concerning the sower, the sower, right? The demoniacs in the matrix sense would be like the jacked-in people. You remember in the movie where they had those people who were jacked in? You understand? Those are the demoniacs, you know, like the regular folks in the matrix, the regular sheeple or whatnot. You understand? The regular sheeple, the demoniacs can jack into them. You see what I'm saying? The demoniacs on a certain level, the truly awakened ones, they can't really, well, well, they can, though it's sometimes difficult, they can. They're easier, the sheep are easier to be jacked into, you know what I'm saying? But these who have, these who are the worldly folks, they believe what, they go along with the world. The world is a, is a standard. They wouldn't give up anything for the world, you know what I'm saying? The world is their God. These are the sequorum. Some may call them the, the secular people. In another way of reasoning, they might be considered the secular people, right? But the fourth kind, remember the seed that fell on the good ground? The fourth kind 
are the fruitful, right? The fruitful. Christ called them the fruitful. Who are the fruitful? The fruitful are the sons, right? Are the sons of God or the sons of El, Elohim, the sons of El, of Hila. You understand? These are the sons, the, the, the children of God. They are the fruitful. Now, this is very important to understand this, this, this relationship right here. There's the no response. There's the emotional response. There's the worldly response. And then there's the fruitful response. Now, we find all of this in the parable, right? This right this down right here. All this we find through the study of the parable that's called the parable of the sower. Right? And in Matthew chapter in Matthew chapter thirteen, this was known as the parable of the sower. The parable of the sower. So when you interpret this and you take it one one step further, um say with the cannabis matrix, these, these, these groups, these four types, the sons of God, the demoniacs, the awakened ones, and the sheep. You know what I'm saying? It's interesting to see how, according to certain the principles, how they interact and how ones come in one of these categories. Everyone that you encounter is of one of these particular groups, one of these particular group. You only can be of one of the particular groups. You understand? Now, the difficult thing is to judge. You understand? And this is why Christ says, do not condemn. You see, because he recognized that that's, at that state of his, stage of his ministry, when he says don't judge, as we mentioned before, in the context of the language, it is don't judge against. Judge in favor. It's like be a defense, you know, attorney. You understand? Um, don't be an accuser and definitely don't be a false accuser. You see, and most folks with a little bit of knowledge, and a lot of us go, have gone through those sort of, it's almost like a process. Sometimes we have to learn, you understand, from our own action and say, oh, man, now I understand why he said uh, don't condemn. But then most people think he said don't judge. Like, like I said before, we've, we've dealt with that um, in another teaching. But this is right here, the four different responses and the four different types. The no response are the sheep. You understand? The no response are because the sheep go to the what? Slaughter. Now, when the sheep get a shepherd, the sheep respond to the shepherd. You understand? They come out of this class and they become the children of God. You understand? The sons of God. The awakened ones could get out of their emotional Lism, and they can also become the sons of God. Now, what about the worldly people? The worldly people are in a situation where it's still possible for the devil to be cast out of these worldly people who have become demoniacs. So if you condemn, if you say, well, we're the sons of Elohim, Ha Elohim, rather, but we're the sons of God, we're the sons of Jah, right? Rastafari. And we then go and we condemn, we judge against all of these other ones. What we're saying is that it's over for them, it's done, there is no hope, forget about it, it's a wrap. But who are we to say that if we are sons? What does our Abba, what does Abba say? What does our father say concerning this? What does his word say? What does our elder brother, what does our... Big brother, our big black brother, Yeshua, what does he say about it? You see, there, there is, you know what I'm saying, a way for those in these categories, but that way, there's only one way. See, some would say, well, there's a lot of ways for these ones to what? 
become the sons of Elohim? I don't think so. No, there's not a lot of ways. There's a lot of ways for them to think of themselves as, see, they don't even want to be sons of Elohim, in a sense, or sons of God. They're talking about being gods. You see, that's, that, that's, that's the worldly response, and we know the worldly ones are the demoniacs. Now, the conscious folk, you know, they may be in emo, an emotional state, but let's go to the word right here while we have a, a moment of opportunity because um, let's go there, and we haven't neglected the great, uh, the, the, the great um, uh, invitation. Um, and we haven't neglected the great tribulation either. In fact, this is preparing us for the great tribulation. Let's go to the be beginning part of this parable right here. Verse uh, 11, Matthew chapter 13 says, He answered them and said, well, actually, let's start from the beginning of the chapter, will we? Um, Matthew chapter 13. We're speaking about now, this is the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Now, the kingdom of of heaven. How is the kingdom of heaven differ, different than the kingdom of God? And the, the associated question or related question is, is the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God the same thing, according to the word? Write that down. You understand? Write that down. Do some study on it. We'll get into the true answer, the biblical, the scriptural answer. You understand? But here it's concerning the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Now, what is the kingdom of heaven? Is it out, out in the sky? Is it talking about the heavens up there in that sense? What is really meant by the kingdom of heaven? Um, those who have a Schofield reference Bible can really study the, the, you know, the footnotes down here and will get a good and a positive idea. So I'll summarize it. The kingdom of heaven is the Christian, the true Christian profession. Anyone who professes or confesses in Yeshua HaMoshiach, yes, it's because of Jesus Christ, in a sense are saying that they are in the kingdom of heaven. That's what the kingdom of heaven is. Now, the kingdom of God is the new birth. The kingdom of God, in order to enter into the kingdom of God, one has to truly be born Again, from above. You see what I'm saying? But first we have the kingdom of heaven, and this is the sower. So the same day went Yeshua out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together to him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. You know, picture I just got in mind, I was thinking about uh, back in ancient Egypt, Right? You notice how they always would show like the ruler sitting in a bark. He's sitting in a bark. You understand? He's, in, he's on a bark, on a boat, right? And he's sitting. He's sitting on that, that square, right? So Yeshua now, he does this. And he spake many things to them in parables. Parables. A parable in the New Testament is a, is a, is a proverb in the Old Testament. Is it's what some would call an archaeology myth, a myth, or mythology. Here, Yeshua is going to explain to us what this really is. And he spake many things to them in parables, Misali wrote, saying, Behold, a soul went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Pay attention to those numbers, too. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. The very same speaking idiot, idiomatic phraseology we have in Revelation. We have, um, 
Yeshua speaking to Johannes, saying the same thing. Like he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. And now the disciples, notice, the disciples came and they said to him, why speakest thou to them in parables? It's like some ask, why do you keep talking about mythology? Why do you keep talking about Egypt? Why do you keep talking about this? You understand? You know, they don't understand what is the purpose of it. Here's the purpose of parables. Here's the purpose of um, proverbs, of, of similes, of, 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 of examples, likenesses, symbolic language, myth. He says, because it is given to you to know. It is given to who? The disciples he was talking to. It was given to the dead come as amore to know. They're not easy to believe. He says to know. So he has to understand that belief, faith, mamen, it's, it's like a code in a computer. It has a specific function. And, but here it says to know. know is, to know is not to believe. To believe is not to know. You understand? But now after they get past that, they, now they get to the point of knowing the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given to those who? To those who are outside. Now notice something. He's speaking to the disciples. The disciples will be in what category? The disciples were in the category of the sons of God. You see, the disciples were in this category. So he said, he's speaking to them in the boat, sitting down on the square, in the bark, and he's saying to all those who are outside, it's not given to them to know. So he's speaking in kind of a parabolic logic or in, 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 in mythology, mythological terms to these who are outside. Because they might be believers to some extent, but they don't know because they haven't come into that yoke of discipline that we have in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to verse 30. Right? So he says, For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. So whoever has. So he's not speaking materialistically. He's speaking spiritually. You know what I'm saying? He says, Whosoever hath that spirit and that truth, to him shall be given. More will be given to that one who has that spirit and that truth, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away even that he hath. So of those who have, who are those who have here? In this example, these four. It is the sons of God. They have. These don't have, and if they have anything, it's going to be taken away from them. Right? Even what even that he has. Therefore speak I to them in parables. He's saying, this is why, Selezi, ergo, Selezi, this is why I'm speaking in parable. For this, Sele, because, is he, because of this, Selezi, because of this, or in your Latin, if you prefer, ergo, you know what I'm saying, therefore, speak I to them in parables. This is why I'm speaking in a mythological logic you understand, to them in a parabolical logic, in myths, mythological speak to them. Because they seeing, see not. So the, the, they'll see it, but they really don't see. And the hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. Remember um, uh, Psalm 119? Remember Psalm 119, uh, verse 130? The entrance of thy what? Word. You understand? Giveth light. You understand? And, and understanding, you understand, to the simple. You see? So neither do they understand because they're not his what? Children. They haven't been what? Born. So they, how can they be his anant? And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Yeshayahu, Esaias, Isaiah, which saith, by hearing ye shall hear. So many are, are hearing, they, they'll hear, and shall not understand. They don't comprehend, so they say it don't make no sense, because they're hearing, but they, why? Because they are not disciples. They did not go through the discipline. You see, they're not in the discipline. 
so they're not able to to comprehend what they're hearing because you know it's, it's almost like they have attention deficit. You understand? They have attention to the word deficit. You know, they hear, but not, you know, but but they don't understand, understand, and seeing. Ye shall see and shall not perceive. For this people's heart, what's the heart? The consciousness. Notice that you shall love the Lord thy God with your whole what heart? With, with your complete consciousness. Now in ancient Egypt, the heart, like the Jed, and the heart was very important in their spiritual, um, their, 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 in, in the mysteries. What do they call it in ancient? They call it the mysteries. Christ is talking about mysteries right here. Some will say, well, that don't have nothing to do with that. See, they're hearing, but they don't understand. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Least at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted. Then they should be converted and, what does it say, converted and I should heal them. Look at that. You know, it's like, it's like even when I began to make more of that um, ancient Egypt kind of the connection between certain things, it's like you, you, you're seeing, you're hearing things, but as you're, as you're in a discipline of study, so you're growing in your, in your knowing. And you're also actualizing what you know. You come to that, I call that the oh. You know, you, you ever have that oh moment. You get that oh moment, and it's like what Christ right here says. He says, least at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart. Threefold. Notice that. Those three had to work in unison. Seeing with their eyes, hearing with their ears, and should understand with their heart and be converted. So when the, those three, one, two, three, then the opportunity for conversion can come about and I should heal them. Notice, he didn't say, well, I'll heal them just as you are. Whatever way you are, I'll heal you. He don't say that. He said there's a process. He's explained there is a process. They have to see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and should understand, right, should, under, should understand with their heart. They should comprehend with their consciousness, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily, amen, I say to you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired they longed to, they, they, they sought to see those things which you see. They sought to see those things that we see now and even have video of it that we can rewind it and have not seen them and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. You see? But now Yeshua is speaking in that sense. He's speaking of, of, of his advent, that, that present. He's speaking a rhema word. You understand? While laying out this principal teaching. So he says here, hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. He says, hear ye. So what's that word here in the Hebrew? Shema. Shema. Bamarinya. Sema. Or Simu. Simu. He's speaking to all of them. So he's saying, hear ye, you all, therefore the misale, the mishle of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received. What's the word receive? Kabbalah. Kabbalah. This is he who did what? Receive seed by the wayside. Now, which one is this? This is the... This is the no response one, the sheep, by the wayside, the stray, the astray sheep, right? The astray sheep with no response. Because, listen, look what it says. It says, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, have they not heard? They heard it. You understand? They hear this revelation, 
and understand if it's not, but they don't comprehend it. I don't understand what you rise to the, I don't understand what you're talking about. Then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is, in his heart is his consciousness. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. But he that received Kabbalah, Kabbalah, the seed in stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and a nun with joy receiveth it. And immediately with joy, yes, yes, I, he received it. Right? Remember the emotional. Secondly, the emotional response, right? But here's the problem. Yet hath he not root in himself. Yet he's not in his proper person. See, this is, this is a lot of these awakened ones. It's like the consciousness crowd. Those who are, and I apply this with the, the Negroes, Blacks, and Coloreds, the Smiths, the Jones, and the Johnsons. They're awakened. They're conscious of a lot of stuff. They know, yeah, uh, the Egyptians were black and, and people in the Bible black. And they, they probably acknowledge Jesus is black and mother's black. And, you know, in Africa and, and, and red, black, and green. They're awakened. But, but, but what's the problem? He has not root in himself. He's not in his proper person. You see what I'm saying? He's not living within the contract or within the covenant. Because that, that, that's how, he don't, he, don't, he don't have a birthright, he don't have a nationality, and if he has it, he hasn't declared it, he hasn't done the work, you see, doing that work to, 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 to get rid of the alien, foreign, European names before it's too late. You understand, before it is too late, a lot of things going on, and there's not always time to go into all of it, but the beauty of, of, of John's word, if we be obedient you know what I'm saying? And do that which is very clear and evident, you know what I'm saying? And there is factual and truthful reason why it's important to do. We will be in the right state, in our right status. But dureth for a while. So this one doesn't have any root in themselves, the conscious ones. Some conscious ones say, I'm conscious. I don't have to be Rastafari. I don't have to be Christian. I don't have to be Hebrew or whatnot like that. Yeah, they're awakened. They're, I'm, I'm into a lot of different kinds of spirituality. Yeah, they're emotional. So when they hear that word, they get emotional about it, but the word says he has not root in himself. He's not in his proper person. But dearth for a while. For when tribulation, hear this, for when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by, he is offended. So when, this is also kind of remind me of Marcus Garvey on a certain level. He excited a strong emotional response. Ones were awakened to a certain Afro consciousness. But he didn't have root in himself. You understand? Know he dures for a while. That means they go for a moment for when tribulation or persecution arises, because of the word, by and by, he is off-ended. And we see how Marcus Messiah Garvey was off-ended. You understand? He, he, he took offense in his majesty in Kedemawi Haile Selassie, and, and, and we all know what was the result of that. So this is the awakened one. So don't make any... See, some people see the awakened ones and say, oh, yeah, yeah, I like that, the awakened ones. They think that this might be a higher level. No, it, it, it's, it's a higher level than the sheep. You see what I'm saying? And in, and, in, and in a certain way, you understand, it is probably better than the demoniacs, but it's not on the level of the sons of God. You know what I'm saying? And there's danger for, 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 for this, this co each of these groups collectively. You know what I'm saying? Each of these groups collectively. Now, here is, a, is, is the next to last one. It says, he also that receiveth, he also that receiveth, he also that receiveth um, seed among the thorns is he that careth, that heareth the word, the one who receive among thorns. So we're talking about the demoniacs. Check this out, thorns. See how this link? Among T horns. And, you know, the demoniacs, they do this right here. This is demoniacs, right, among the T-horns, thorns. Remember in the Omen movie, right, 
what was the family name? The family name was something like Thorn or something like that in the Omen movie. So he also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word. They heard the word, and the care or careers, we would say, of this world, of this seclorum, and the deceitfulness of riches, what do they say, um, 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 get rich or die trying, and they make that a virtue. You know what I'm saying? That's all part of the seclorum. That's this group right here, the worldly response, the demoniacs. And here Christ points them out. He says that it, it, they hear the word, but the care of this world, the care of this seclorum, the deceitfulness of riches, they choke the word, right? And he becomes unfruitful. So even those who opt for a worldly kind of response as opposed to John's word becomes unfruitful. So Christ is showing how these three right here, we have the first one by the wayside, we have the next one among the, among the stones, you know what I'm saying, a stony ground, and then we have the third one among the thorns. Now let's hear the fourth group, right, the fruitful, the sons of God. But he that receiveth Kabbalah, Kabbalah, seed into the good ground. See, that's the qualifier there. Into the good, the tob, into the good ground is he that heareth the word and comprehendeth it and has intelligence, must wow, has intelligence of it, right? So he hears intelligently and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. That's interesting right there. The numbers. We'll, we'll touch on that when we get into some of the more, um, I would say mystical, but the higher level of this, because we don't want to, you know, go off on um, some like a lot of, uh, 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 you know, what they call spiritualistics. You understand? Or metaphysics, mystical thing. But if it's not, if it's not um, principle, prophetic, and, and, and practical, you understand, in the fulfilling of, of, of the vision and keeping us in and in, in living in the covenant, you know what I'm saying, and protecting our birthright, you know what I'm saying, then it, it should be avoided because it's a waste of time. It's basically a waste of time, those sort of things. So here this parable really, we put, we put 18 to 23, right, but we should actually put verse 1. The main part of it, verse 1 to actually 23, would be a little bit better. So we took off that 8 right there. Let's take this right here and put verse 1, verse 1 to, um, verse 1 to uh, 23. Because that whole parable, the parable of the sower, is contained. So brothers and, and sisters and mothers, this right here is a teaching, and a very important teaching. Check out the scripture. Write this down. Um, we're going to reason some more on this, but we want to lay this down as a foundation. Ones really need to understand this, so ones will know who's who. You understand? On the spiritual level, in accordance with Jah, Jah's word, uh, Yeshua, Jehoshua's word, Jesus Christ, the Moshiach's word, breaking down the four different types of responses to the word and the four different types of, um, of for lack of a better word, pe people. You understand? We have the, the no response, the lost sheep, no response, the emotional response, the conscious, the, the conscious crowd, the awakened ones, some of the, 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 the spiritualistic ones on that sort of level, the worldly response, the demoniacs, you know what I'm saying? The ones basically the demoniacs, the worldly ones. Because he said, love not the world or the things in the world. And Yeshua teaches that connection with the world is with the demons and the devils, the fallen, the fallen archons. And then the fourth is the fruitful, the ones who are fruitful according to their capacity, because some 30-fold, right? Some 30-fold, it says here or some 100-fold, some 60-fold, and some 30-fold among the sons or the children 
of God, and they are the fruitful kind. So it's important to understand this particular relationship right here of the four types of response and the four types of, 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 of people. You understand that, that either you are or that you will encounter. Stay tuned for the next lesson. Shalom. Rastafari.